my mother-in-law Sherry was a very different person from the vain and superficial woman she is now. That change happened late in her life, or at least that's what my husband Dylan believes. As children, Dylan and Sherry did not lead lavish lives. After Dylan's father passed away when he was only four years old, they lived a modest life together. Sherry took on the role of breadwinner, and they lived a simple life until Dylan got a great job after college. Dylan is a wonderful and kind man, and not just because he is my husband. He got a full scholarship to medical school and became a doctor. Despite his success, Dylan remained humble. However, Sherry's life took a turn toward luxury. Let me be clear. I don't have a job for reasons I'll discuss later. But that doesn't mean I'm poor or dependent on others. Unfortunately, Sherry had the wrong impression of me when we first met. Whether it was my clothes or my mannerisms, something repelled her. The first time we met, she said, Dylan, is this the girl you've been raving about? She's so plain and ordinary. Why did you choose someone like her? Does she even have a job? My name is Rose, and no, I don't have a job. However, Sherry decided that I was planning to trap her son and bilk him out of money. She called me a gold digger and a slacker, making unfounded assumptions about my character. Dylan defended me, but the argument escalated and we decided to leave. On the way home, Dylan apologized for his mother's behavior, admitting that she had crossed the line. He reassured me by telling me that his mom didn't know how to act the old way anymore. Although her words hurt, Dylan asked me to ignore them. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that feeling comfortable around Sherry might not be easy. After all, she's the only parent Dylan has left. I decided to step back. We don't have many distant relatives, and cutting her off completely was not an option. I said, I'm not going to insist that you be friends with her, but can you at least be civil to her? Dylan asked, I can behave respectfully towards your mum, Dylan, but I doubt she'll reciprocate. Don't worry, Rose. I'll keep her in line. If she crosses the line, we can consider cutting back on contact. I love my mom, but I love you too. I won't let her torment you for no reason. I was skeptical about my relationship with Sherry. Dylan assured me he'd stand up for me, but I still felt uneasy. Dylan and I got married three years after we started dating. We had a court wedding due to financial constraints. Dylan was sending Sherry a lot of money every month for emergencies, even after we married. He continued this practice, draining our finances. I didn't stop him. I believed he had the right to help his mom. However, Sherry became a problem. She regularly spoke ill of me and gossiped with her friends, spreading rumors about me being a gold digger. I ignored it initially, but it started affecting my reputation. Despite Dylan's efforts, Sherry never treated me kindly. He believed I wasn't good enough for her son. Surprisingly, one day, Dylan told me that his mom wanted to invite me to a small party she was hosting. I was skeptical since she disliked me. Dylan assured me that she promised to improve and wanted me there. It seemed odd considering her recent financial struggles, but Dylan believed she managed somehow. I agreed to go, despite my concerns about her behavior. Dylan hoped his mom was making an effort, so I decided to keep an open mind. I truly wanted us to mend our relationship and become friends, I had serious doubts that Sherry would ever consider being friends with me. Despite my willingness to be civil and make an effort for Dylan's sake, it seemed that Sherry had little regard for his happiness. Despite my skepticism, I decided to attend the party, eagerly waiting for Sherry to provide details. Sherry texted me the next day, and I assumed she was extending the invitation. However, her message took an unexpected turn as she started mentioning the party at a five-star hotel, promising her friends a great time. This excited her, and she planned to take 15 people. Curious, I asked if I was invited. Given Dylan's assurance, to my surprise, Sherry responded with arrogance and disdain. She made it clear that I was not invited, emphasizing the exclusivity of the event due to her wealth, family status, and the supposed classiness of her friends. I was taken aback and confused as Dylan had genuinely believed Sherry was extending an invitation. I expressed my assumption only to be met with Sherry's condescending remarks, stating that I wouldn't understand the intricacies of planning such an event. I decided to maintain my dignity, acknowledging her message and clarifying that I wouldn't attend if I wasn't wanted. Sherry reiterated her stance, 
emphasizing her class and status, while I resisted the urge to respond with anger. Disappointed and hurt, I chose not to share this with Dylan. Instead, I patiently waited for the day of the party. Sherry, oblivious to the emotional impact of her actions, sent me a picture showcasing her and her friends in designer outfits, flaunting their status on social media. I refrained from responding, choosing to focus on my work and patiently await the unfolding of events. After about three hours, I received a call from my dad. Here's a confession for you all. My dad owns the hotel where Sherry was hosting her party. Sherry had no clue about this. Three years ago, I inherited a substantial amount from my grandfather, which I invested in my dad's business. Now I receive a share of the profits from the hotel and other family-owned businesses. Despite coming from a well-off family, I prefer not to broadcast it. That's why Sherry was unaware of my background. She also had no idea about the high cost of the five-star hotel and its restaurant. Sherry and her friends ordered without checking the menu or prices, resulting in a hefty $2,000 bill. This turn of events was the perfect opportunity for revenge. My dad called me to inform me that Sherry was at the hotel, having amassed a $2,000 bill, and was now asking for a 50% discount, claiming she was short on cash. My dad sought my advice, as Sherry's party had been rude and entitled, upsetting the staff. As expected, I shared my frustration with my dad, recounting how Sherry had boasted about the party to mock me for not being invited. The irony was not lost on me, given that she couldn't even afford the party she was flaunting. My dad expressed his understanding of the situation and shared the challenges faced by his staff due to Sherry's behavior. I saw an opportunity for revenge and suggested making Sherry and her team wash the dishes, clean the entire kitchen, and the floor. Given their insulting behavior, I wanted to extend this revenge to include Sherry's team, who had also mistreated our staff. If Sherry tried anything foolish, my dad could call the cops on her. My dad laughed at the suggestion, giving it a big thumbs up. He even offered to share pictures of the event. It seemed like the perfect chance to turn the tables and teach Sherry a lesson about humility and respect. When it happened, I would have relished seeing Sherry face the consequences of her actions. My dad promised to follow my suggestion and hung up. An hour or so later, he sent me pictures of Sherry and her friends washing dishes and wiping the floor at our restaurants. He also shared that when Sherry saw him as the restaurant owner, she looked relieved. She began telling him that she knew the owner and they would get out of the situation. To her surprise, dad instructed her to clean his restaurants. She was dumbstruck for a while, and when she started to protest, Dad reminded her that since she didn't consider me family, he didn't consider her family either. It was a hilarious turn of events, and though I wished I was there, I did get some good pictures. After a while, Dylan came home looking visibly upset. I could tell he had heard from Sherry about what happened, and I knew she must have given him a twisted account of the events. He approached me, questioning what he heard about my dad making his mom clean the restaurant dishes. I explained to Dylan that it was the usual norm for us in such situations. Sherry had gone to our restaurant, racked up a $2,000 bill, claimed she didn't have more than $1,000, harassed our staff, and her party had been a nightmare. I believed this punishment was fitting. Dylan seemed surprised and questioned who Sherry had taken with her and what they ordered. I informed him that she took 15 people— and they ordered a lot, especially the fancy items. He expressed disbelief as Sherry had told him she was taking only four people and had invited me, but I declined. I clarified that things didn't happen that way, and I showed him the text messages from Sherry. Dylan requested the bills and asked me to show him the texts, wanting to understand the situation better. I showed Dylan all the texts, and my dad sent him the bills. I also presented some pictures to illustrate the scale of Sherry's party. Dylan grew extremely mad when he saw everything. He called Sherry, asking her what was wrong and why she hadn't told him the full story. Sherry claimed she only mentioned being short of cash, and I must have given him a different story to sabotage her. Dylan confronted her, pointing out that she declined my invitation and insulted me by saying I wasn't classy enough for her. Sherry tried to brush it off as a harmless joke, but Dylan wasn't buying it. 
He questioned her spending thousands of dollars taken from him on friends while insulting his wife. He called her out for her actions, stating that spending $2,000 on food and drink wasn't a small matter. Sherry was left trying to justify her actions while Dylan expressed his disbelief at her behavior. I made a mistake by giving you money whenever you shared stories about needing it, Mom. Well, guess what? I'm not giving you any money again. But Dylan, you've been so supportive for so long. You can't just stop now. It was a one-time mistake. Why are you overreacting? Mom, I am not overreacting. This is not a one-time mistake. If you can't even consider my wife as family, I don't want anything to do with you. I always thought you would change your mind, but you never did. I'm not paying you to insult my wife and call her classless while she sacrificed a lot to support you. This ends now. Dylan didn't listen to Sherry anymore. He hung up on her and blocked her number. He also apologized profusely to me for being mad at me without knowing the full story. I forgave him because, well, he did stand up for me. We had a serious discussion about Sherry and jointly decided that she will no longer be in our lives. For now, yes, Dylan is now a wealthy man, but he knows to stay humble. He found Sherry's behavior completely unacceptable, especially because it was directed towards me. I agreed with the fact that it was very unfair to me, and I was all set to remove her from our life for good. In the next few days, Sherry reached peak Magnus. She realized that her own actions may have damaged her relationship with her son for good, sending her into a horrible panic. She showed up at our house and demanded to speak with Dylan. Slowly, her demands turned into begging after she was turned away from the door every time. Yes, Sherry worked and earned some money. However, it wasn't enough for the high-end lifestyle she had gotten used to all these years. Dylan had stopped giving her money entirely. Instead, he invested some of his funds into my dad's business to help him open new hotels and restaurants in the neighborhood. We do plan on expanding our hotel business to bigger cities, but we'll have to see what the future holds. Since Dylan stopped sending her funds, Sherry had to downgrade her lifestyle significantly. She was struggling to keep the rented condo with her own money and ultimately decided to end her lease. She has now shifted to a small one-bedroom apartment and doesn't have any money to spend on extras after all the bill payments. How do we know this? She emails us about it. Of course, she still downplays her behavior and acts like we are overreacting. Suffice it to say, she will be out of our lives for a while now. Just a month ago, I found out that I was pregnant. Dylan and I are overjoyed and busy planning everything before our baby comes. To be honest, I'm glad that my child won't be around shallow people like Sherry anymore. But if the time comes, I will make sure my dear mother-in-law doesn't get to fill my child's head with nonsense. For now, please wish us luck so that we can be good parents to a healthy child.